What is going on YouTube? It is your boy Mr. The Bad Bullet back with a reaction a video. This time we have Vlad the Impero. <clears throat> Number two. This is episode two for Vlad the Impero series. Uh we're gonna react to it, you know what I mean? It should be fun. I'm excited. I love I love learning about Vlad the Impero. Episode one was pretty good. If you guys haven't checked it out yet, make sure you guys go check it out. Out that's a pretty good episode. I enjoyed it. Um I will be smoking in this video, so once again, it might get age restricted, most likely. We're gonna see. Uh, let's see. We're gonna react to this, get this going, you know what I mean? Let's go and get the reaction screen up, pull it up. Better bing, better boom. Let's see. Let's go like that. Gonna put in that. Like that. Uh, Ottoman M. Look at that, look at that. Just like that. And then, real fast, go get your drink, your kush, everything else. Let's take a hit real fast. Yeah, I don't try to kill the bow anymore now. I feel like <coughs> I don't know. I just always done that. Like smoke the bow slowly and like start with one side and go all the way to the other side. It, you know, no, no. Maybe I'll make a video on it one day. Maybe. My bad. So like, off topic. Let's go and get into it. Empire 1447. This is how Romanian folklore says it happened. When Vlad Dracul was being run down in a marsh, when he knew that he'd be caught and killed by the pretender Vladislav, he gave his sword and pendant to a loyal boyar. Take them to my son. For five days, the boyar rode, evading enemies and crossing rivers, until he entered the Ottoman Empire and presented them to Vlad Dracula. And as the boyar recounted the deaths of his father and brother, Dracula stood staring at the sword and pendant, both given to his father by Sigismund, both marked with the iconography of the Order of the Dragon. And there, the 17-year-old Vlad Dracula swore that he would not rest until he had avenged his murdered kin, and that he would personally, with his own hand, slay the pretender Vladislav. Shit. Do we think he's going to do it? I think he's going to do it. While the story <laughs> we started with may be folklore, it does capture a solid truth. When John Hunyadi's invasion killed Vlad's father and brother, it put the teenage hostage into play. Murad seems to have told Vlad of the deaths himself, and then followed it up by making him an officer in the Ottoman military. Because despite the greater popularity of his younger brother Radu, Vlad's seriousness and determination had convinced Sultan Murad that this was the prince they wanted ruling Wallachia as an ally. All right, off the bat, okay. I love him already. His character design is, is my head? favorite. And considering how brutally Hunyadi and his allies had killed Vlad's family, Murad also assumed that any chance of the young prince defecting to the Hungarians was most likely buried alive with Vlad's older brother. Plus, it was the perfect time to reclaim Wallachia for the Dracul dynasty. For when John Hunyadi and Vladislav marched into Ottoman-held Serbia, Murad had dealt them a shattering defeat outside Kosovo. In fact, the route was so chaotic that no one even knew if Hunyadi or Vladislav had survived. Seeing his chance, Vlad stormed into Wallachia with a Turkish cavalry force and seized huh. the throne, a dramatic beginning to a powerful and bloody reign. Soon, Vlad would take revenge on the boyars who had betrayed his father and brother and would carve a swath across all of the land of... Wait, no. Oops. Sure. <laughs> Sorry. Funny story. Vladislav actually turned up, both very alive and with an army, recaptured the throne, and sent Vlad back into exile. His first reign lasted all of two months. At first, Damn. he fled back to the Ottomans, but things weren't safe there either. 
Vladislav, though he'd accepted Hunyadi's help to be installed on the throne of Wallachia under the explicit agreement that he'd fight the Turks, was discovering the same thing Vlad's father had. Wallachia simply couldn't survive against the Ottomans without Hungarian aid, and Hungary was a mess. Soon Wallachian boyars pressured him to make peace with the Sultan. So he sent envoys to Sultan Murad looking to strike a deal, and Vlad, rightfully worried his death might be a condition of the bargain, fled to Moldavia. And Vlad received a warm welcome there. For that year, his huh. uncle had become the ruler of Moldavia, oh, and his shit. cousin Stephen the heir apparent. And the three years that Vlad spent there, connecting with his cousin and getting a Renaissance education, were likely some of the happiest of his life. He even got Shit. a taste of military glory, helping his uncle and cousin turn back a Polish force. Good days. Though the time was abruptly cut short when his uncle's half-brother assassinated him, and Vlad and Stephen both fled to Hungary, where Shit. he was forced to play cat and mouse with John Hunyadi. Going from town to town, hiding with sympathetic boyars, and at one point slipping away just as a squad of ambushers tried to catch and assassinate him. Then everything sure. changed again. First, Sultan Murad died, and in his place rose his more vigorous and ambitious son, Mehmed, who declared it his top priority to finally conquer Constantinople. A goal made possible, since while the city was still a trade center and symbolically important, it had okay. declined in military power. Oh, Hunyadi's shit. star was falling as well. While he was still revered <clears throat> as the most famous crusader against the Turks, his two recent defeats had tarnished his reputation. I mean, a few years before, he'd essentially ruled Hungary on behalf of a child king, but now he was back to just being a plain old prince of Transylvania. And then Vladislav. Well, Vladislav was aligning ever closer with the Ottomans, uh. meaning Hunyadi was suddenly shopping for a new prince of Wallachia, which set up an interesting space for an approach between Hunyadi and Vlad because each did have something the other wanted. Hunyadi could give Vlad legitimacy, official recognition in Hungary, and a path to reclaim his throne. And in turn, Vlad could give Hunyadi an able partner who knew the Ottoman military and leadership from the inside and who could replace Vladislav if necessary. Striking this deal, however, uh. meant that Vlad would need to join the man who'd slaughtered his family. Hmm. Yeah. But in an ironic twist, Vlad's father of all people had prepared him for this decision back when he'd abandoned Vlad as a hostage with the Ottomans. Politics was impersonal, and if reclaiming his throne meant foregoing vengeance, then so be it. Vlad became a noble at Hunyadi's court, and his new patron took him to the coronation of the new Hungarian king, Ladislaus the Posthumous, where he took an oath formally to act as an ally of Hungary huh. and the Catholic Church. Okay. His role would be the same so. as his father's, halting the Ottomans' advance and reclaiming Christian lands. And with his oath sworn, the Hungarian Diet charged Vlad with defending the Transylvanian frontier against the Ottomans and their Wallachian allies, a duty his father also held. <laughs> News of Constantinople's fall in 1453, while no surprise, did sour the celebrations. Huh. Stories had filtered in that the Ottomans had impaled prisoners in front of the city walls, a punishment used by both Ottomans and German Saxons as a way to scare the garrison into surrendering. Believing the city would fall and wanting to preserve his strength for defending Dang. his own territory, Hunyadi opted know, against sending troops to now. Constantinople. But he knew that Mehmed would not stop hmm. with the bastion of Eastern Christendom, and the next place on the chopping block would be the Hungarian frontier city of Belgrade. So in 1456, okay. he whipped up an army of mercenaries and marched to relieve the city, leaving Vlad to defend the pass into Transylvania and keep Vladislav tied down. Yeah, cool. Hunyadi's forces that, reached that, that Belgrade cool. so just as the besieged city was ready to fall, broke through the Turkish lines, and managed to get inside oh, the shit. citadel to reinforce the beleaguered garrison. They broke the siege, repelling Mehmed's forces after weeks of combat. Hunyadi, the white knight who had fought the Ottomans for decades, had relieved Belgrade, an event described as a miracle. But a miracle that went sour, as plague swept into his camp, killing Hunyadi hey. and the expedition's other leader. But Vlad Dracula had little time to mourn the enemy-turned-mentor, for his goal had been to tie up Vladislav's forces, and he knew the best way to do it. Invasion. Hey. Oh, as he okay. crossed into his homeland, he looked up to see a fell star burning in the heavens, Holly's Comet a celestial body that people across the world interpreted as either a sign of impending catastrophe or great events. And meeting his enemies outside <coughs> the Wallachian capital of Targovishta, Vlad took the burning star as a sign of coming victory. We know little about what happened next. According to one story, sure. the relatively small armies clashed, but in another, the forces decided to settle the issue by single combat. Vlad Dracula, son of the dragon, against his cousin Vladislav, prince of Wallachia. 
Though in both versions, Vlad slays the Pretender with his own hand. When he took the throne, his coins were stamped with the five-tailed comet, the symbol of his victory. But that victory would be difficult to hold on to, because while he agreed to pay Mehmed 2,000 gold as tribute, and agreed to let the Ottoman armies cross his lands, these agreements were only to buy time for him to build and repair more fortresses and solve internal problems at home. For the faction of boyars who had brought him to the throne were a small minority of the nobility. Most had supported the slain Vladislav, including those who had risen up and killed Vlad's brother at the prompting of John Hunyadi. Indeed, it was only months okay. into his second reign when a young boyar raised an army of mercenaries to dethrone the young prince. But Vlad ambushed the little band as they marched toward Targovishta and made an example of them no one would miss. His troops sharpened long sticks, greased them, and then shoved them into the bodies of the noble and all his male kin. Then he left them, still living, beside the road to die over the coming days. Yep. Over time, he would refine this gruesome method yep. of execution until history remembered him chiefly for the brutal spectacle. Oh, Vlad yeah. the Impaler had arrived, and his enemies would suffer. Oh, That's yeah. right, Zoe. Ahmed Zia Turk, Alicia. Oh, <coughs> Vlad the Impaler is pretty cool, though. I, I mean, he's definitely brutal, but <coughs> I think he's pretty cool. Let me know what you guys start talking about Vlad and Player. Episode 3, I feel like it's probably going to be talking more about, you know, how he got the name Vlad and Player. And about all the wrath he's caused. But, he is still a pretty cool dude. I, th I think so. He's pretty cool to learn about. He's pretty interesting to learn about. So, let me know what you guys' thoughts are down below in the comments. Like, comment, subscribe, turn on post notifications. I will see you guys in the next video, episode 3. So, you guys stay safe. Watch out for each other. Uh, I think that's it. I'll see you guys in the next one.